Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Welcome back to On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Uh, today's a, this is a fun day. Like, uh, you know how you've been pregnant for a really long time, <laughs> and uh, you've just been, like, waiting to birth this baby <laughs> to your family? That's kind of what's happening today. That is an extreme analogy. It was a pretty good one. But yeah. yes, that is exactly what's happening today. I, I would go more with like when you haven't told anybody yet that you're pregnant. When you have that period, you know, when you know, but oh, you can't yeah. tell anybody. Okay, I like that too. I, For I the record, I've never been pregnant. <laughs> I was yeah maybe I was gonna use the analogy like oh we've been planning for like a birthday party and we I've been like doing all that things and now we get to do the surprise part which is yeah. to the audience yeah so a lot of planning goes into days like this this is if you're listening to this watching this this is launch day of the brand new Weatherby Sorix. Uh, and and th- this is there's been a lot involved in this so this, this is gonna be like a longer intro than probably normal so you're welcome or I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Tyler, our marketing manager, uh, has been instrumental in this. And then Kyle, across the table from me, Kyle Killen, killing it. Um, <laughs> Kyle's been with us for five years yeah, five as years. our international sales manager. And recently, hmm, let me say that different. He's been our international sales manager for five years and our unofficial shotgun product manager for about the last year and a half. And uh, as of like a couple weeks ago, the official shotgun product manager and has been instrumental in uh, bringing this new Sorix to life. So uh, I'm your host, Luke. I just do stuff. (laughs) A lot of things. Yeah. A lot of different things. Um, That's not important, though. So what is important is this new Sorix. So Kyle, give me the rundown. All right. So it's been about actually a year since we started this project. So this is what I call the Die Hard Waterfowler's Dream. So Tyler and I have talked about this. This has everything we wanted in a waterfowl gun. So we've gone with extended controls on it. We've aggressively comp cut the receiver. We changed the lifter design because I was notorious for getting my finger caught in here. I was too. Yeah. We got rid of that issue. We went to a stepped rib because Tyler loves them. That is my, yeah, that is a preference. <laughs> That's your jam? That's, that is, that is my jam. preference for sure. <laughs> Uh, we've added some aggressive touch points in the wrist of the stock to increase grip in cold and wet weather, uh, fix the safety issue as far as actually now having something that is substantially sized and easy to hit with gloves, because the last one is just too small with gloves. And then the big thing that not many people have seen yet is that this is designed to switch over. So this is the bolt handle. This is the bolt handle coming out, and I can't see it because of the angle here, but basically we are going to turn it into a left-handed gun. So I'm not sure if the camera caught all that, but um, opposite the ejection port on the receiver, there is a long, thin slot that uh, basically is the travel of the bolt. And so you can go from a right-hand operation to a left-hand operation on the same gun. You can just shift it right on over. Yeah, ooh, shift. I liked how you said that. So yeah, that's we're calling this our shift system. And when Kyle was describing that safety, that's a little oversized, easier to to click on and off. It's also really easy to get in there and switch that to left-handed control too. So when we redesigned that safety, we really kind of forethought so that it was really usable for left-handers. Yeah, we. Oh, that's like the rewind sound. So, um, we've not really ever had a lefty shotgun. We're we've got lefty rifles. Um, we like lefties rejoice right now <laughs> like we get these guys all the time they're like what about for the lefties it's still gonna eject on the right guys just so you know yes. but but from a control perspective you can use your left hand to cycle the bolt you can use your left pointer finger to operate the safety yep and the stock you can reverse the cast and cast the stock for a left-handed shooter 
Yep. yep. So. And another thing is just it really does help with your sight picture. When you don't have that charging handle in your sight picture, it does do wonders if you're a lefty to swap that to the other side. Yeah, you're so. fixing 90% of the issue, which is watching that thing bouncing back and forth in front of you. Not many guys really see the shell coming out as much as they think they do. It's that charging handle that just keeps going back and forth. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, at the risk of, like, maybe propping Kyle up too high and, and like, hurting his head a little. Uh, I, I, when I got to Weatherby, I kind of considered myself a shotgun guy. Like that was my inception into hunting was waterfowl. Um, love duck hunting, love waterfowl hunting, love shotgun shooting, like took great pride in beating people on the sporting place course with my pump gun. Like that was like my, (laughs) that was like my jam It's when people be like, Oh gosh, this guy's a, what is he doing? Showing up with this gun to the shoot. I did like a pretty exclusive ducks unlimited shoot one time where i showed up with a pump gun when people were shooting like caesar greenies yeah, and yeah, Krieg yeah. Offs. Yeah. yeah there was a guy looked at me that like kind of sponsored the team he was like dude i thought you said you were a shotgun shooter <laughs> <laughs> and uh i was the first up and i cleaned the station so they were like okay all right i see what's happening here i think i was the only guy to clean the station at, at on our squad i was like Okay, I feel pretty good. I shot really good that day. Anyway, I got here and I realized I really didn't know Dilly Squad about shotguns <laughs> when I started talking to Kyle because Kyle's the shotgun whisperer. And uh, yeah, I'm I'm pumped that you've been involved in this thing. But when when you say we've worked everything out, we we messed with spring rates. We did yeah. all the things. Yeah, we changed spring rates out on it, um, increased tumble time on receivers to smooth out all the operating parts. Like, yeah, we've done done a fair amount of tweaking and tuning to this gun. And um, the end result has been um, well, it's been really fun to, to to test. Like, we didn't just develop this thing and then said, "Okay, let's launch it." The whole man, all season long, we've been. Yeah, been tinkering and doing the whole thing. I, I think that's kind of a really fun thing is we did. We took almost like the whole entire summer to really tinker and find out. I was like, hey, this is the best gun, best version that we have. And then we got to the hunting season and be like, what can we do to find wrong with this thing? So we took it to Canada where it's like a lot of high volume shooting. And then we took it to all of these different parts of the country. So it was cool to even see that evolution through hunting season where it's like, oh, we'll tweak this one more thing. We'll tweak that. And then now we have this finished gun, you know, a year later and it's pretty incredible so yeah and um one thing we didn't talk about when we're describing the gun is it looks a little different than other shotguns <laughs> just like physically from from the outside um most other waterfowl shotguns out there have a camo dip we will do that in the future but um one of the things that you look at when you're a manufacturer is like what are we good at you know the kind of good to great model mm-hmm. um what we're great at and what we've become great at in um, the last five years that we've been in Wyoming is a, a lot of things. Like we, we make a lot of things, but our, our stock decorating team on rifles is really strong. Yeah. And uh, we've got some really cool finishes and we do a lot of carbon fiber stocks and we're like, man, how can we, how can we use this team here? And uh, we started talking to those guys, engaging that team, and we're like, you know what? We've got a really cool resource here. Let's do something different that nobody else is really doing in shotguns. Let's do a sponge pattern that incorporates the color palette of the, these different areas that we hunt that incorporate the color palette of the different patterns that we all wear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and let's put it on our shotgun stocks, and let's get um, from our Italian partner, let's get – essentially barreled actions and then let's decorate the stuff here yeah and so that's what we've done yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty fun to go down into the manufacturing floor and just see people painting it's like shotguns and assembling doing final checks doing all the things that make a weatherby a weatherby so. yeah i love why we walk down there and you see them all hanging in the drying center and it's yeah. just yeah. like yeah yeah that, that's a future shotgun coming i have thoroughly enjoyed um taking I've done, I don't know, what, five or six hunts maybe this year? Yeah. You guys have done more than I've done. But um, when you take one of these out of the case for the first time, that somebody that hasn't seen it at all yet. Oh, yeah. And they're like, 
what is that? That thing is sweet. <laughs> yeah, that is a good feeling. Like, and then just getting the feedback too. We got a, you know, a few select partners and people who were in part of that product development testing side. Yep. And everyone, same thing. Like, I can't believe the way this thing looks, kind of thing. So it yeah. looks even better once you get it in the field. <laughs> yeah, they're like, yeah. It just is like it's ready. Yeah, you know, that's good. Oh yeah. Well, it was like when we got up to uh, Saskatchewan pulling it out in the lodge that night, the reactions from everybody there was just like, what What did you guys do? And it's like, this is new. And they were like, this is awesome. Yeah. It, it, well, you know, this might be polarizing, but you know how like when there's a new truck model, whether it's the new Tundra <laughs> or the new Ram, the new Ford, the, they roll the body style. It's like goes to the next body style. And at first you're like, man, that's cool, but I don't know if I like it. I, I had a moment of that with this, but um, it was so short and like instantly like, I actually freaking dig this. <laughs> yeah. That, that uh, Canada trip was pretty unique. Um, from a like diversity standpoint, we had multiple guides there. We had multiple oh, yeah. writers and industry guys there. We had guys who produced content and then we had like the, the tried and true dealers, some of our Canadian dealers. So we had a wide breadth of like people there that were like everyone from who's going to talk about it to who's going to be the end user, to who's going to sell it. So it was kind of fun to see everyone's reactions, and they all kind of ended up to that same point of, like, this is different and cool. Yeah, so. yeah. It's been – it's um, we've begun pre-selling these to our business-to-business partners in the last two months, and uh, the reactions there, too, have been very similar. They're like – you can kind of see it in their face. or like processing what's different, and then they they get it. They're like – oh my gosh, this will work with Sitka. This works with Kuyu. This works with First Light. This works with Masayoke. This works with Realtree. Like all of them. And you're like, yeah, it does. <laughs> and they're like, okay, we'll, we'll take them. <laughs> yeah. And then it starts getting easy once you start kind of listening to the features. And then honestly, where we ended up landing on the price point for this shotgun too, being an Italian made shotgun finished here in the US, it's a really good value that you guys, that we're going to be able to provide. So I like that aspect too, because now I can recommend this to every one of my buddies and be like, "Hey, it's going to be worth that fourteen hundred and ninety nine dollars." Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. It's it's feature rich. It puts in a nice price point. It's something where everybody looks at it and like, "Okay, yeah, you are really getting your money's worth out of this thing." Yeah. So, um, just to call a spade a spade, we've had the eighteen I for a while in our mm-hmm. line. Uh, we took the eighteen I uh, as a starting point, and then this is kind of like the next evolution of that. And we wanted to go to a, a whole new name because. We've redone the stock, we've redone the, the the decoration, let's call it, and then physically the receiver is miles different, um, but it's the same tried and true reliable functionality available in 20 gauge also for the first time, which yes. is pretty rad. Yep, 20 gauge now, uh, three inch. 20 12. gauge in a synthetic, sorry. We had yes. the 20 gauge in a wood model, mm-hmm. the limited of the 18i, but on the Sorix now we've got waterfowl models in 12 and 20. And we also, on the 20, because the 20 had a small post top, so you could not do the uh, magazine tube extensions for snow goose season. So we got rid of that, went to the big ring, so now mag tube extensions will work. Yeah. It's got it's got all the things. Um, I, of a variety of shotguns, would get my thumb caught on the lifter. Yeah. And uh, even with gloves on, I didn't notice that happening with this thing. Yeah, that was a big complaint I had with the 18 eyes is like chronically just getting my thumb hung up. Like it got to the point where I was pushing the lifter up, yeah. sliding my shells in, and yeah. then letting go because I was just every time in a rush, I would just jam it up. Yeah. Shout, so. shout out to the, the Midwest Flyways guys, Cal, who they run a podcast. He said he tried for like 20 or 25 minutes to get his finger caught. He's like, I can't do it. I, I just love <laughs> the design of this receiver. It's like, he's like, I wanted to pinch my finger, but I couldn't I do it. I just couldn't do it. Um, I'm a right-handed shooter. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I, if I go shoot like a, a, a normal, not a professional level, Olympic level sporting clays, but if I shoot a normal sporting clays course for just for frame of reference, not bragging, but I'm, I'm, I'll be frustrated if I'm anything below 80 out of a hundred. Mm-hmm. And I'd be kind of happy if I'm like upper eighties and low nineties. So, and that's shooting right-handed we needed left-handed content and I'm like, I'll just shoot lefty on this trip. 
You were a pretty darn good lefty <laughs> shooter, man. <laughs> and holy cow. I, it's like I couldn't miss lefty. That's funny. I feel like I shot better lefty than I did righty. I was talking about, th- yeah, because you did it, like, when you went to, uh, I wasn't actually on that trip, when you guys went to, to Wy- Wyoming, Wyoming, it was Colorado. like a little tour, but yeah, with the Hush guys. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, with Casey from Hush, but uh, we started in Casper and worked our way down to northern Colorado, and for two two whole days, I shot nothing but lefty, and there were multiple times where the first day, birds weren't cooperating, so... It'll I'm like, okay, this is turning into some pass shooting. <laughs> <laughs> you hooked me up with that choke tube. Yeah. Yeah, the Muller choke. Yeah. yeah, the UFO. Oh, no, I was, that one was passing. Yeah, okay, the yeah. passing choke. So it was um, – there was a couple shots that were out there. Probably most people would say it was sky busting. But my response to Casey was, it's not sky busting if it's sky killing. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. It was, it was funny. But, yeah, oh. it totally left-handed shots, probably admittedly further than I would normally take. I'm like, we need to get some – we need to get this party started. Mm-hmm. And uh, just absolutely so crushed that was That was late season, though, too. So sometimes birds can be kind of tough if they don't want to be right tough. where they were. It was tough. They were not they were not cooperating to decoys. But, um, yeah, well, this was just a tough season, probably for everybody that's a, a hardcore yeah. waterfowler. The weather uh, cooperated on the last day of the season, and then it got so wintry in one day that all the birds moved out in one day. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, we could have a whole podcast on how everyone's <laughs> uh, season went. Yeah, so. that was – this is the hardest I've had to work for the amount of birds we killed this year. Like, it is something else. And what's crazy now is the snow migration already is, like, jumping off. They're, they're taking they're, off already. I've got like grass trying to grow in my yard again. <laughs> uh, like our our perennial bulbs are whatever that's called blooming. I don't know. It's nuts. <laughs> they're coming up. They're emerging. It's wild. So till so, tonight at least. And yeah, we got weather coming in tonight. Anyway, Tyler, you you took this to probably the coolest place and, and maybe the harshest environment in Kodiak saltwater sea duck hunting. Yeah, tell I us think about that. I remember when we pitched that idea. Is like there's like no tougher spot for uh, like testing shotguns and if we want to know how like like it was hunting saltwater so you want to see how good of this shotgun is it's like we need to go there and we need to have some emphasis on some sea duck hunting stuff so yeah we got nothing but you know the typical like weather that you would think you'd get in kodiak we had days where it was spitting rain you're hunting from a boat hunting from shore so it performed really really good there we learned a lot of good things there and man that some of the most beautiful birds beautiful scenery It was definitely a bucket list hunt for me. And uh, honestly, a couple other Weatherby guys got to go on that one too. And it was just like kind of one of those like hunts that you just like dream about. And it kind of came true. So we got to shoot some Harlequin. We got to shoot some Scouters, uh, Barrows, Goldeneye. So it was a crazy good trip. And it handled the saltwater pretty darn good. Yeah. So because it has a – so if you guys see all the metalwork here, it's it's coated in Cerakote. So we've done some Cerakotes before. But all of our models will only be finished with Cerakote. So Yeah. Yeah. All the metal work will be. And I know you put it through its paces because you used it for a boat paddle at one point. Uh, no, it was retrieving a duck. And then it was a little yourself t- back because you <laughs> Tyler, almost went over. the picture on the <laughs> podcast <laughs> intro, you have the gun in the water. I know. It's because the tides. Um, that's what I'm going to blame it on. Uh, yeah. Yes, the tides were going out. Because so. when you bring it back to me and I pull the recoil pad off and like a couple ounces of water comes out the buttstock. So I was going to say, you you uh, product development guys can definitely know the testament that us marketing guys get blamed for for bringing back products pretty well tested. Yes, well used. Hey, as bad as you are, Tyler, Adam's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> I Man, Kodiak's just, is, it was tough, though. I mean, I did spend an hour and a half cleaning those shotguns before we got on the plane, and they were still dirty. Yeah. But, so. Well, your problem was the case got wet, too, so. Yeah, true. It's tough in those environments. Yeah. But. but they 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 were a little worse for wear, but they were still functioning and cleaned up great. Yeah, so. yeah, that's crazy cool. That that's where it was kind of the we had a bunch of different like on the testing side. We had a bunch of different scenarios. Like the Canada thing, it was you know October and you're shooting tons of like oh, yeah. limits there, Kyle. Maybe walk, walk us through the limits and how much yes. like on the endurance side of like man, this thing is cycling multiple different types of shells and. All oh, of those yeah. things. Yeah, because we were shooting, you know, everybody shot their eight ducks or eight geese on multiple days. And you're talking eight shooters at yeah. a whack and the amount of birds that we just stacked up. Like, some of the pile picks are a little ridiculous. <laughs> um, but the volume on that, the gun's just getting ran. And we didn't clean them the entire time we were there. 
yeah. we just kept shooting and shooting. And you're shooting. in that silt, kind of silty dirt, dirt yeah, up there, that, that stuff that's good for, for the crops and stuff. So. Yeah, real fine dirt. So that was great little testament to like how that system was running clean, how it wasn't picking stuff up. And it just it kept running like a top. So that was great. And then, let's see, we took it to Montana. We did go. Before that, though, you went to Oregon. Yeah, went to the Columbia. Yeah, Columbia River. Beat it in the boat pretty hard, so, uh, and may have gone swimming almost once <laughs> when I stepped in a, a hole. So, yeah, no, we ran it on the Columbia. Um, it's tidal water there as well, but not the salt content you get in the Kodiak, but just ran the living daylights out of it there. Shot a nice penny for November there. So you shot a stud one, too. I did, yeah. Well, it was January 10th. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. In northern Colorado, and we had a six-man limit, and half the limit was green wing teal. Yeah, that's pretty That's pretty. That's lame. a little <laughs> odd. <laughs> yeah, that's a little <laughs> We <lame>. shot <laughs> Widgeon. We shot a couple um, Gadwall. Um, Casey from Hush and I both shot great drake pintails like yeah. just I saw great those pictures great, they were pretty great cool. birds i was pumped yeah it'd been a lot of years up here uh it's funny i started waterfowl hunting in texas and like if you got one green head you were thrilled because <laughs> it's just gray ducks for days down there and yeah. you'd get wood ducks which was, i like a lot of wood ducks which was super cool but you'd get a mixed bag you get widgeon you get pintail teal would hang around for a pretty long time but like it was a mallard was like your dream bird down there at least North Texas around Dallas where I was um, coming up here hunting Wyoming and Montana. It's like, there's nothing but mallards. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, well it makes sense why there's no birds down South because they're all up here. Yeah. But now you can shoot anything other than the green head. And I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause we all hunted Montana a couple times, different times together mm-hmm. and a lot, a lot of green heads there. That one, there was one day with the final approach guys where I think we were on a four man limit just, Every Straight single green. one was green. No yep. hens. We were picking them out that day. It's yeah. Fun. It's easy to pick them out there when they're 14 yards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were hunting this cool little backwater slough, and it was just like bird just fluttering straight down. And Yeah, I think you it. and I. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. I think you and I multiple times were jostling and, like, sitting there eating, like, uh, jerky and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, it was just, like, out of nowhere. There was no circling, no nothing. It was just pitching straight in, and you're just dropping stuff and right. just shooting. That's the, head. The oh, That's the best. That was a good day. That was a great day. I I just thoroughly enjoyed this uh, this shotgun season um, with this new Sorex. Like, like I said, you had a better analogy. I said we're we're pregnant and we had a, we birthed our, <laughs> we birthed our child. But really, it is. It's like telling people, hey, we're pregnant. You know, we've got this thing. It's it's, it's real. But sharing that, just like we were talking about earlier, but you share that with the first time and somebody sees it and they get it the way that we got it without having to explain much. They're just like. You are on to something <laughs> here. This is sweet. Yeah. I'm thrilled. I'm pumped, too, because this year we did a really good job of documenting everything, too. So we're kind of, you know, we're stepping up the shotguns, right? Well, we're also stepping up the content. So this year we were pretty committed to capturing most of all these trips that we're talking about. So we'll have some mini series stuff. And as you guys see the year going along here, you'll see a lot of content uh, that we shot the last six, six eight months. So Yeah. And some of that content's out there already. You just don't see the gun. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, so this it's probably, we're actually in February, but there's a lot of travel coming up. Uh, we're going to release this, should be in March. Mm-hmm. So I don't yeah. know the exact day right now off the top of my head, but in March we're going to be releasing these. Um, if all goes according to plan, we'll have shipped some of these already. Yep. And yep. Uh, you could probably even find some of these. Um, should have some at Shields, your local dealer. Um, I think Sportsman's Warehouse is playing ball. Mm-hmm. There's uh, there there's quite a few of them out there already. So yeah, we're uh, we're trying to trying to have stuff available. The twenties are going to lag a little bit behind, just a little bit. But yeah. the twelves are uh, should be about to hit the shelves if they haven't already. Yeah, and if you're in the market for a shotgun, you'll have some of those snow goose opportunities. But it's also I don't even think we talked about how it's drilled and tapped and ready for optics if you're a turkey guy. So oh, if yeah. you want to run a red dot so these things are drilled and tapped so that's a difference from the 18i the 18i has a had a dovetail on the top of the rail yep. this mm-hmm. is still a, a well not still this is a rounded receiver on the top but 
drilled and tapped. So yep. you can you can very confidently attach a red dot. Yeah, the dovetail is nice. These they're, these are a little more readily available than mount systems. For yes. Correct, yeah. So. And there's some new stuff coming out now for red dot mounts too that will allow us to get that dot sitting way down tighter to the receiver. So that way you're not having to raise your head up as much when you're turkey hunting. So it'll be a great, great option come this uh, spring. I may or may not have shot a turkey with one of these for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. A, a yeah. turkey has already died. Nice. Yeah, I forgot about that. Um, it was a pretty long shot. <laughs> <laughs> We're, uh, do you remember what choke you had? We're running cryo plus chokes in these, just like the 18 eyes. So yeah. there's lots of, you know, it comes with five chokes, but a lot of aftermarket support. So I'm sure you had an extra full in, maybe? No, I was using a standard modified. Standard modified. Look at that. Yep. A little, little testament to the pattern. He had uh, he had some tungsten loads. I know that much. It was yeah. I was using some TSS. Nice. And uh, my wife and I doubled, and okay. um, it was her first turkey, and she was carrying a twenty gauge shotgun, and a rifle. <laughs> yeah. And the way it worked out is like I didn't want her to take a probably longer than fifty yard shot. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just I wanted it to work out. Well, we live in Wyoming where it's legal to shoot a turkey with a rifle. So I ranged these birds at 106 yards, <laughs> which she promptly uh, dropped a turkey. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And I was thrilled. And um, I had actually not planned to shoot a bird, but I got a tag because when you're hunting a flock of turkeys, when you have TSS, I've seen multiple times now <laughs> where well, uh, scotch y- double there's yeah. uh, collateral damage yeah <laughs> <laughs> so i had a tag in my pocket she shot one bird i'm like the birds didn't go anywhere they just came like right back i'm like huh, I'm, gonna let, I'm gonna let her rip <laughs> and uh drop one right next to the first one right for thanksgiving dinner huh yeah so we had uh two turkeys for thanksgiving that's a good that's cool See, and I thought either you or I were going to end up with the first body count for turkey on this thing, and I forgot that he had gone yeah. and done that. So, well, well dreams have been dashed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited for spring, though. We got kind of a full spring schedule coming up, too, between some snow goose stuff in Canada and then yeah. hitting the turkeys pretty hard. So. I have had four different snow goose trips planned, and I have yet to go on a snow goose hunt. <laughs> The they, weather has been wild. Yeah. Yeah, and snow goose hunting is a love-hate relationship. California for snow geese this year on one day, that was rough. We started at 3 in the morning. The effort yeah, for these birds is extreme. <laughs> Setting six, 1,600 decoys starting at 3 a.m., I'm pretty sure I did heart damage with the amount of energy drinks I did that day. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's not good for you, Kyle. I know. <laughs> um. I, like, like I said, I'm just thrilled to have these have these launched. We've announced that we ha- are pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, it's it's uh, we're joking, but really we're so excited to to bring these out to market. I think we have a missing element to our shop shotgun line, pun intended, not intended. I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's just a different animal, and uh, the feature set. I think um, I'm particularly excited about the oversized. Like, the closure of the bolt with that oversized button is so darn easy. Oh, you can yeah. literally do it with your pinky. Yeah. Yeah. Way better than trying to hit that little button in negative 10 degree temperatures. Like, this is making life easy all the way around. Well, I got to stop. I feel like I'm gushing about my, like, five-year-old that just learned how to do a backflip. <laughs> <or something, laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. We're so yeah. excited. Um, you guys got anything else to add to this thing? I think we've covered it all. No. I think we're good. Yeah. Well, thank you for listening to this podcast. Uh, if you want to learn more, weatherby.com, go to the shotgun tab, and then there should be a Sorix menu on there. Click on that and see how awesome it is. Actually, you guys have been teasing me with the website preview, yeah. and I've seen a couple teasers. There, there's I'm gonna excited be excited to see this web page. I haven't yeah, even seen web, it yet. Web page is going to be good. We're going to have a full on like informational. We like to call it a landing page. So there will be all things sorks. You'll catch the launch video there or on YouTube. The launch video, we're kind of doing the finishing details on it. It's, I'm pretty proud of the team on the launch video. It's going to look pretty cool. And then we have our product page where you can go and get all the text, like technical specs and all those things and see kind of the three options of the Cerakotes and uh, sponge patterns we were talking about.
pretty awesome. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. I'm I've seen a couple sneak peeks of the launch video too, which is dynamite. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Uh, um, for DJ, our podcast editor, you can end the podcast now unless Kyle answers the next question correctly. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to put him on the spot. Okay. Tell us a fact about waterfowl that is obscure and not a lot of people know. This was not rehearsed. <laughs> yeah, this is a tough one because I don't even know what I would say. <laughs> that, that is so broad. Uh, let's start with in Oregon. There's seven subspecies of Canadian geese that pretty much only Oregon and Washingtonians know. Seven species, subspecies of, of can- Canadian. Yeah. Do can you name them? You have Aleutian, Cackler, Taverner, Dusky, uh, Greater, Vancouver. There's one I'm forgetting. Six out of seven is <laughs> pretty good. Cackler. That is pretty good. I, get, I did probably skip Cackler. I think you did say Cackler. Okay. Yep. Mm. But. You can leave it in, DJ. I think he, I'm going to say yeah, he passed. that was pretty good. I'm impressed. That's why you're the shotgun product manager now. Good yeah. job. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. All thanks. right. Thanks. Um, and again, thanks for listening. Check it out, weatherby.com. Make sure you sign up for our email newsletter. Also, if you like shotguns and you're into shotgun content, Go father, follow, father. That's not father. Go. Man, we're talking about he's, he's back on the <laughs> pregnant train. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, don't father anybody unless that's what you really want to do. Go follow Weatherby Field and Flight. It's a separate Instagram page that we have that is dedicated more to the scattergun variety.